everyone. Uh, my name is Philip Struger. I'm a dev tech engineer at NVIDIA. And today I want to talk to you about path tracing in general uh, and specifically about the path tracing SDK code sample that we've been working on uh, over the past year. So we'll cover path tracing basics. We'll uh, cover all the hardware and software features that help us accelerate path tracing. Uh, we'll cover the main topic, which is the real-time path tracing, and we'll introduce the path tracing SDK, uh, which is there to help you easily uh, add path tracing to your current code base. Okay, so let's take a high-level view of uh, what path tracing is and why why is it so important to us. In this talk. When we refer to ray tracing, we usually refer to the mechanical process of tracing a ray through some kind of scene and figuring out what it hits. In itself, it's not very interesting, but it's the applications of it uh, that is where the things get very interesting. Over the past years, games have been integrating uh, some applications of ray tracing into their rendering engines. Uh, it's typically shadows, reflections, ambient occlusion, global illumination. Ray tracing offers real benefits there over traditional uh, rasterization-based methods, uh, such as being able to handle light and shadows from millions of light sources. Um, path tracing is another application of ray tracing, but it's it's not just a single uh, effect like reflex, reflections or shadows. Path tracing is an algorithm, um, a simple algorithm at its core that we use to make the entire image. It's um, it's an algorithm that basically solves the rendering equation iteratively by collecting lots and lots of light paths. I'm going to give you a quick step through uh, a typical path tracing, uh, starting from the light that's coming out of a light source, in this case, sun, and hitting a cloud. Uh, this particular ray happens to bounce off the cloud and it happens to shoot off towards a tree where it hits a green leaf. And just considering the diffuse part of the reflection now, the red and blue light gets com almost completely absorbed by the leaf and uh, the remaining light can be re-emitted uh, in essentially any direction from the surface. This example uh, happens to shoot off into the sky and then into the space, never to be seen again. Each of these lines uh, we call a path segment, and the entire path uh, of the light is referred to as a path. Now, but this specific path is completely useless to us because the camera is here and none of the light comes to it. So uh, usually path tracers take advantage of the fact that paths are reversible. So instead of tracing paths starting from the light source, we can trace paths starting from camera, like this. This way, uh, almost all paths will contribute something to the image. Not all will contribute the same amount of light, uh, but more on this later. The actual path tracing algorithm can be written uh, very simply in terms of a recursive algorithm like this. And don't worry about the details. Uh, it's just there to illustrate the core idea uh, of, uh, of the path tracing, which is quite simple and beautiful. Uh, this, this loop will uh, trace many paths uh, per pixel in order to get a good result. And uh, by the way, when we talk about uh, samples per pixel, then each sample that we refer to, uh, that, that's usually a whole path, which in turn has uh, is, it uses multiple rays itself. So once we execute this many times per pixel, uh, in the end, we get a beautiful image like this. <clears throat> so the path tracer works by calculating lots of path uh, flight uh, through a scene, paths that end in camera, being partly uh, absorbed, re-emitted, reflected, and refracted by things along the way. The more paths uh, we can calculate, the more accurate the results are. Uh, this is why we often talk about an image converging over time. 
and the results are amazing. You get reflections, global illumination, shadows, refractions, everything just more or less falls out of this one simple algorithm. So let's see a, a, a simple example of what pure power tracing looks like. Here uh, we see images being built up as we go uh, and add more samples per pixel. Uh, and the image starts out uh, being very noisy when we only have a small number of paths, but then gets cleaner and cleaner as we get more paths. Uh, and this highlights the main issue, um, the number of samples that we need to do per pixel to get a, a good, good image. Even at 1000 samples, the image is still not good enough. It's, it's noisy. And this brings us to the reason that until recently, path tracing has been confined to offline rendering. It's simply expensive. Each segment is a ray traced through the scene. Each path has many segments. Each pixel needs many paths. It depends a lot on the scene, but many thousands of paths are, per pixel are not uncommon. So let's talk a bit about how we can accelerate path tracing.